Hey, Toyotics, this is Jody, and it is time to talk about what sold in October. I had some pretty good sales in October. Um, I sold a lot of stickers and things from that sale. So if you remember, we've talked about that before. Um, a state sale that I went to where it just they just had tens and maybe hundreds of thousands of pieces of ephemera stickers and paper and stuff like that. And it was fill a bag. So I have some things, some bigger things I'm saying 50 cents, some other things I'm saying about 10 cents in. So um, if I talk about the Dundee sale, because that's a town that it was in, um, or maybe I'll call it the paper sale. If I talk about the paper sale, um, you'll know that I spent 10 cents to 50 cents per item maximum. Um, as well as some health and beauty items, I spent um, 50 cents to a dollar on those. And so if I forget to say what I paid for things, to me, what I paid for things is not as important because you're not going to find things at the same price. What's more important is what things sell for. Because we're not really here to examine what I sold. We're here to to show you what can sell and for how much on eBay, right? Okay, so let's get into it. I got this little Twin Stars sticker book. This was actually in one of those big sticker books that I got. Um, and if you haven't watched the videos of any of those, they're a lot of fun to go through. This one was actually just taped in, so I was able to take it out and it sold for $30. A friend of a friend contacted my friend and said they had some strawberry shortcake stuff at this little thrift store a few miles away and um, so I went over there and I found also at that sale this little Charlie Brown Halloween delivery truck and I picked it up for a dollar and did not realize that it was I actually sold it for $35 I did not realize it was going to be that much it's a real riders which means that the wheels are actually rubber instead of plastic and so those are ones to kind of look out for because they sell better <laughs> this little guy i picked up at a sale for like a quarter i just thought he was funny he sold for ten dollars he's a roto rooter man and uh, these little candy containers didn't actually come from the sale where I bought a ton of candy containers. I went to a huge Star Wars sale with my sister and um, I bought a bag full of candy containers. So these two Ewoks here, I probably paid $2.50 for them and they sold for $14. And these are some just old Disney cassettes. I didn't even have the books with them. I had a bunch of teacher stuff in my garage that I decided to clean out, and these were some of the tapes that were in there. At the paper sale, I bought an entire drawer full of greeting cards. A whole bunch of them were Holly Hobby. There was only one Strawberry Shortcake one, unfortunately, but a bunch of them were Holly Hobby, and so this was one of them that sold for $12. This came from the health and beauty sale. I paid a dollar for it and it sold for $30.60. Vintage English leather is very sought after. So if you see that in a full bottle, you should definitely pick it up. And this old photo play magazine I bought from a gal that I follow on Instagram, Magpie Ethel. And um, she had a bunch of old magazines at her garage sale for a dollar each. So I picked this one and a, a few others up that you'll see. And that sold for $15. And I know that a lot of magazines like this don't sell for a ton, but I like them a lot. So I pick them up anyway. And they're not hard to list or anything. This is the first of, you'll see a bunch of these Valentine cards. They're not exactly politically correct. This one sure isn't. They're from the 30s or the 40s, and that one sold for $15. And it's just a single Valentine card, but it's a little punch-out paper doll. And this actually got canceled, Play School Bricks. This tent stick is from that same Health and Beauty sale, and uh, so I paid $0.50 cents for it. Sold for $27.50. It's actually for your hair, and this is black, so you just you're just putting a little bit of black into your hair. Um, they also have gold, purple, pink, blue, silver. So I'm assuming it's like if you're going to a party or something, but this is from the 50s. So it's interesting that they had this little tint stick that looks like lipstick and that the, um, the tube is metal 
and really pretty, but uh, I just thought it was really interesting. I picked up this Staley's Waffle and Pancake Glass Jar, again from Magpie Ethel. I just love the jar. I thought it was really neat. It's kind of hard to photograph a jar <laughs> and all of its little intricacies like this because the light kind of shines on it. But it was a neat jar, and um, I think I paid $5 for it, and it sold for $20. This little book, Petunia the Duck, was in that um, the, far, the car was full estate sale clean out that I did. So about 50 cents for that. And then here's another one of the magazines, David Nelson from 1960. David is the son of Ozzie and Harriet, if you've ever, and was on the show, if you've ever heard of that show. And then here's another one of those magazines, Teen Screen, that sold for $14. This was a scarf I picked up. I got a whole lot of scarves a long time ago, and all the other ones sold, but they were mostly Bob Mackey ones, and this one was not. So it took a long time to sell, and it sold for $5. <laughs> but it's fine. I made a bunch of money on all those. So here's another vintage menu that I picked up. This one is from Hawaii. It's sold for about $20. Typically, um, Hawaii menus I have seen actually do a bit better than this, but this one had some condition issues. And it's not really a restaurant menu per se. It's from a hotel room, so it's like a room service menu. So um, the price was a little bit lower on that one. Over here, we have some Holly Hobby. It's just pull-out pages from a magazine that sold for $10. And then some more of those Star Wars candy containers. Those sold for $18. And here is one of those giant sticker books. This one was 64 pages, but it wasn't the best one. I had listed it on auction and it did not sell. I don't believe in starting auctions really, really low. Yes, I know that's going to attract buyers, but it's also going to end up in you selling stuff really, really low sometimes. So... I'm not really interested in that. <laughs> so I started this at 99 and it didn't get any bids. So I did a buy it now at 125 and a day later, someone came back and offered me a hundred dollars and I took it. This is a Hopper family paper doll book that I got from that same sale. I believe it sold for $23. And then this is a peppermint patty. I actually went to an antique mall my mom really likes to go to antique malls and, you know, I like to walk around them, but I don't, I'm not usually really looking for much inventory there because, you know, their prices are high, but this was $6 and she sold for 25. So that was nice. Anything, it seems like peppermint patty usually does pretty well. Also like Franklin does well and um, Marcy peppermint patty is a little partner and, you know, sometimes Schroeder. Those are, you know, the rarer characters. These are some little combs that from that uh, paper sale, I got a jar that was plastic, a large plastic jar that was full of doll hair combs. And um, I paid $10 for the whole jar. And these two tiny little moon dreamers or my little pony, they were used for both little hair picks sold for $10. So that was nice. So I picked up this little dapper fella for $4 and he sold for $35. And here's another 50 cent lipstick that sold for $15. This item I was super excited to sell. Um, I'm not going to say who, but a wife of a celebrity that I greatly admire is a person that bought this. Um, and I knew, you know, I could see from the name and I thought, oh, that's too much of a coincidence. And then I looked up the address because, you know, the ad, the internet has celebrities addresses and it was the same address. So I was pretty excited about that one. <laughs> <laughs> um, over here we have, I had gone into Goodwill one day and I picked up a couple Bucilla sets. I knew this one would sell pretty quick. The other one I still have, but this is a Christmas treats, gingerbread men, full stocking kit, felt stocking kit, excuse me. And it makes this stocking. It was open. If it wasn't open, um, I would have probably put it for 50, but since it was open and the package was kind of 
not great. I put it for 35 and I said, I think everything's there, but I wasn't a hundred percent sure everything was there. So I know that would affect the value. Here are some stickers again from that paper sale sold for $7. This is a Lucy rig, Lucy and me paper doll greeting card that sold for $6 from that sale. This is just one single little mod, two by two inch mod of Hambly Studios stickers sold for $8 and another paper doll greeting card that sold for $7.50 and another single sticker that sold for $6. And then we have two little small two by three sticker sheets that sold for $9. This is a lot of seven Charles Ventura cats, kitties, paper dolls, postcards that also had a letter with it. This is from the, also from the paper sale. And the gal had bought a lot of artist cards and paper dolls and things like that. And, um, directly from the artists. So the, there was a letter in this set from the artist. So those sold for $40. This was a postcard that was also stickers on the front that sold for 11, a single sticker for 10. Another one of those teen magazines that sold for 10 was Shelly Fabre on the front. Two little Santa Claus sticker mods sold for 15. And then these are, they're the same size of the Sandy Lion Maxi Activity stickers. So I kind of put that in here to kind of give an idea of what they are with the same, um, they're like four by six also, and they have a little, you know, you do activities with them, but they're from a different company. But those six sold for $25. Here's just a piece of ephemera I've had for quite a while. It's an oyster shell and it's um, advertising Portland, Oregon machinery and boats. It's a Victorian trade card. So that sold for $9. I have no idea why it was free shipping because I never mark free shipping, but there you go eBay glitches sometimes and you end up paying for a shipping. <laughs> this little mug here is from Art Lacey's Bomber. If you're in the Portland area or the Pacific Northwest at all, I think that was always a pretty famous um, place. It's a gas station that had an airplane on top of it. So the gas pumps were underneath the airplane that opened in the 50s and was a roadside attraction here in the Milwaukee area for up until, let's say they started taking the plane apart about 10 years ago and there were still parts of it up, but it's finally all gone now, unfortunately. And there was a little restaurant behind it and called the Bomber Restaurant that's also closed now. So that sold for $40.50 when I was having a sale. This little porcupine, porcupine, porcelain occupied Japan um, little figurine I got for free at a garage sale that sold for $9. And then these little due date cards, any kind of little library cards or library pockets, they don't sell for much, but they always sell for me. So I usually pick them up when I see them. And those sold for $10. This is a little set of milk, glass, salt, and pepper shakers. I thought when I saw them, I thought they were for corning wear, but apparently they weren't. It wasn't the same um, cornflower blue. So they sold for about $13, but they were still pretty neat. These are my last two Louis L'Amour, last two lots of Louis L'Amour books. They both sold to the same person. I actually sold them, end up selling them for $12 a lot. Um, I bought 113 or 114, I can't remember now exactly, Louis L'Amour books, a whole set, almost the whole set, because I believe the whole set's 120. But um, I sold several of them for good prices. I sold one for $225. I sold one for $200. I sold one for $150. And then once I had sold all the rare ones away, then the rest of them I sold for $12 a piece. And I bought the whole lot of $113 or $14 for $20. So I made quite a bit of money off of these Louis L'Amour books, but they did take up a lot of space. So I was kind of glad when they 
were all gone. These are two little windows or doors, excuse me, doors, not windows, from the Precious Places Fisher Price little mansion that um, I bought several years ago. And if you've watched these videos, you've seen me selling off all kinds of little, there's so many pieces and parts to that little mansion and I still have a ton more. But I bought, sold the little doors for eleven twenty five. Now this guy here, Uncle Sherman, I don't know why they call them uncle. It makes it so much worse. And I don't, honestly, I don't know why I bought him. <laughs> I think I paid 7 or $8 for him at an estate sale. And he is a flasher. So if you don't know, back in, I don't know, 70s, 80s, it was kind of a pop culture thing. It was on cartoons and movies and everything of a guy walking around in a trench coat and then he would open the trench coat and he was nude underneath. He's a flasher. So that's what this plush was. He's a flasher. So you open up his coat and he's anatomically correct under there. And uh, I did not put a picture of that in the listing, so don't go looking for it. <laughs> but I did show my sister and she was like, ew, why did you show me that? That's so much worse than I thought it was going to be. It's gross. So I had him actually had him listed for um, even higher than this. And I took an offer because um, I was just, I didn't want him to be correcting the rest of the flesh that I have anymore. So I just had to get rid of him. <laughs> This little book over here is the 1928, The New Art of Society Makeup by Max Factor. So this is actually a pretty neat little makeup booklet. Max Factor was a very famous makeup artist in the teens, 20s, 30s. He made up a lot of new and different makeups for the movie industry. And um, if when they changed to better cameras and different cameras, the makeup had to be different. And so he would make up new formulations. And it talks all about that in this book. But this book only goes to 1928. But I've actually been to the Max Factor Museum in Hollywood, California. If you ever go to like the Chinese theater, there's a, a museum right across the street called the Hollywood Museum, which is actually used to be the Max Factor Makeup Studio. And it has a whole lot of information about him and then all the celebrities that he did the makeup for. And there's like real, you know, Marilyn Monroe dresses in there. And I mean, so much, so much Hollywood memorabilia is an amazing museum. If you're ever on vacation out there and you get a chance to go to that museum, it's totally cool and really underrated. Nobody really talks about it, but it's, if you like old Hollywood and that sort of thing. It's really cool. And then here we've got a, uh, just a little lot of stickers. What I did when I was at that sale, that ephemera sale is there were a whole lot of like loose stickers and labels and things in the bottom of boxes. And so I would just scoop up as many as I could and just throw them in my bag. So as I've been going through stuff, I've been just kind of making little lots to sell. So these are all just heart stickers and that sold for eight bucks. And that's pretty good for paying. I mean, you know, like I said, it was fill a bag. So that stuff didn't add any extra. I didn't have to make a new bag. So basically free. And uh, next we have a lipstick. This is called Pink Pearl, but it has uh, definitely degraded a lot. I put 60s on there, but I actually think it was probably from the 50s and is a metal tube. And it's a really neat tube. So the person who's buying this is not buying it for displaying that lipstick. Most likely they're going to probably empty it out and reuse the tube because people do that. They make their own lipstick formulations and fill old tubes. And that's probably what will I would assume because it's not a nice looking lipstick at all. So over here we have, this is one of my better sales or maybe my best sale this month. This is a 1973 Jovan man hunting kit. It's three different types of musk, ambergris, civet oil, 
and um, musk oil. And it's just in these little tubes and inside it's telling you about how these create pheromones and you can attract a man with them. <laughs> it's kind of funny, but um, I, I feel like it's kind of a novelty gift kind of thing that they made up to hope, you know, to sell some of their oils. And um, I bought this at a antique mall in Astoria, Oregon, when we were on just a couple day little beach vacation. And I paid $15 for it. And it sold that same day this picture. The picture is, you know, not a white background like I usually have, because I'm actually sitting in the car, you can actually see my feet down there. <laughs> Um, so I took it like right after I bought it, we had sat at lunch and I was looking it up and I was like, oh my goodness, I gotta, when we get back in the car, I gotta list this right now. So it actually sold that same day while we were still on vacation. Um, I took an offer of 275. I probably could have held out. Someone sent me a message the next day and said, if you haven't sent that, will you please cancel that? And I'll pay you 325. So I was like, no, I'm not going to do that. But yeah, if I ever find another Jovan Musk oil hunting kit, or if you do, list it for three twenty five dollars because there's someone out there willing to pay that. This is a postcard that I actually got at that health and beauty sale. They actually had a, an ephemera room as well. And I got a bunch of postcards for, I think it was 10 for a dollar. It might've been four for a dollar. I don't know, 25 cents, 10 cents. Um, but these were extra long postcards and it's for the Coral Eaves Apartments in Palm Springs. So that sold for $8. And these are some little doll underpants for um, Chrissy. Chrissy is a doll that has um, a button on her stomach where you push it and her hair grows. So she's got like really long hair inside her body and then you can make it shorter or grow it. If you've seen those dolls before and her clothes are her, the original dolls clothes are bright orange. So I tend to find them a lot because they just stand out in like a box of doll clothes or whatever. <laughs> and I like to buy them because people like to pay like $12 just for her underpants. <laughs> this next item is a torrid shirt. It's um, Muppets, Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem Band. I bought some things from Torrid and um, what I like to do when I'm shopping online for at websites and stuff like that is I like to see if I can find some things that would sell at a, you know, if they're at a reduced price and clearance or whatever on the site and then that I can sell and cover the cost of the things that I'm buying on the site, which is exactly what happened here. The, this shirt was... Um, on sale for eight dollars and it sold for 33 bucks which is nice and then i got the two t-shirts that were also on sale for eight dollars basically for free right because i cover the cost there um this is a, a hallmark christmas gathering cut and sew fabric panel so i like to get these fabric panels i always pick them up because even though they don't sell for a lot, they do sell. And you can usually get them for 25 cents or 50 cents. And um, so this one sold for $9.90. And I paid 50 cents for it. But they, you know, it they take no space. I have a box that's um, fabric and craft items. And I probably have, you know, 100 things in that box. And then you just throw them in a little poly mailer and that's all you got to do for shipping it. And so it's real easy. These little cupies came from that paper sale, sold for $8. I bought a mystery bag at Goodwill, which can be a really bad idea or a good idea, <laughs> but it turned out pretty good. Um, the bag was $6.99 and this was in it, this little lunchbox and it was stuffed with some pins and some other things not Sanrio things but things from other loot crates and stuff and um, so this sold for ten dollars these three are auctions that I had put up that did not these five actually that did not come to fruition which is fine I just relisted them for ten dollars each and I have already sold one or two of them 
This is a little nail polish that sold for $10 from that health and beauty sale. Fit, I paid 50 cents and then also 50 cents for that one sold for $12. This is a little like 1920s midnight Tessie midnight lotion. It was an empty tube. Um, I bought it at, at a garage sale for like 10 cents or something and sold for $5. Here's some of that Trixie's Diner stuff I bought at that paper sale. I paid $5 for each thing, and this one only sold for $15, but I have bought, sold, sold others, like the refrigerator sold for $75. The pinball machine sold for $43. So this one wasn't the best um, as far as that goes, but some of the other items were very good. Oh, this Pierre Cardin men's cologne sold for $25 and it leaked in the packet, which I've never had that problem before with um, perfume, but you know, you never know how well they made the caps. And even though I made sure it was on tight, I don't know what happened, but anyway, it didn't seem to break or anything, but it did leak. It leaked all out all over the napkins. He sent me pictures and stuff. So I just refunded him all of his money. That's the only time that's happened out of hundreds of bottles of perfume or cologne. So I'm not, you know, I'm not going to sweat over it. This little magazine here is farm and fireside. It was in very poor condition but it had, um, the cover was by Norman Rockwell, Santa Claus cover. So I paid a dollar for this magazine and I sold it for $10. Typically, if I get a magazine in this condition, I'm going to cut out all the ads and list the ads individually. But, um, this one, I thought someone might be interested in that, which they were. This is also from the Health and Beauty, just a little Maybelline eye pencil sharpener that sold for $21. And this is a 16 millimeter film that sold for um, $36 called Arthur the Kid. It was a weekend special. If you remember on ABC, it was like hosted by OG Readmore the Cat. And um, this one is called Arthur the Kid. Um, also on that Astoria trip, we stopped in a little thrift store and I bought two of these Trendmaster Star Castle um, Berry Tea Castles for $20 each. And this one sold for $65. Still have the other one available if you're interested. <laughs> and um, these Hallmark Snowman stickers, also part of the paper sale, sold for $10. A few postcards. These all sold to the same person, um, Spokane, Washington. This one, um, vintage postcard house with split cedar boards. This was also from this Washington state. And then this was also from Washington state Naval, um, air station. So they must've been a Washington state collector. I sold this Sandy Lion sticker sheet, Maxi Activity sticker sheet for $25. Also from that paper sale, I had another one of these um, Three Wise Men that I had sold for $20. And this one was in a little bit better shape, so I just pushed the price up a little bit. $15 for these Unicorn and Holiday gift stickers. And $13.50 for this Ziggy Halloween plush that I had bought him forever ago. I've probably had him for three or four years. Paid 50 cents for him initially. Also in Astoria, we went to a little liquidation store and I bought these for 40 cents each and sold it for $14 for the three. This little doll came from that paper sale. They also had a doll room and the dolls were fill a bag as well. And I filled a huge bag full of dolls. So I'm saying I paid about 50 cents each. So this little Honey Hill Bunch gal sold for $15. These Wings of Glory, they're like foil etch prints. I bought these at a garage sale a couple of years ago for a dollar. I thought I wasn't, I was 
just kind of going with my gut, thought maybe some people would be interested in these, and they've actually hung around for much longer than I thought. This one sold for ten eighty. This was kind of neat. It was a little Hallmark box of Santa cards, um, but I just kind of liked the box. I thought the box was neat, and the cards were little square cards um, made by Norman Rockwell. And I think I paid like three dollars for the box. And it sold for 22 This one I thought was really cool too. This is a little needle book. So if you open it up, it has all the little sewing needles in it. And it was um, this Norge washer-dryer combo appliance from the 50s. And uh, that sold for $12. And here's another lipstick. Let's see. This is, yeah, lipstick from that sale. That sold for $9. Um, also from that sale, there was a, just a little book of Johnny Walker black label stickers. It was interesting, <laughs> but that sold for $13.50. It actually sold pretty quick. And a Holly Hobby calendar that sold for nine. And then this is a Sandy Lion Toboggan Time 1984 Maxi Activities sheet of stickers that sold for $50. Okay, final week of October. This is a little American Presidents in Miniature toy catalog. This is actually from Marks, and I actually have the whole full set of these miniatures also for sale. But it, this is just, I had, it came with two catalogs, so I sold one of them. And then these next few are all of these little paper dolls I showed you earlier, paper doll valentines, they're little perforated single valentines. And this one I thought was funny because, um, <laughs> I called it a pinup because she's in like a little swimsuit, but it looks just like these, but apparently they decided it was an adult only item. But these little valentines sold for 15 to $20 each which was nice and all to the same person, which was even nicer. I went to an estate sale this summer that was supposed to have strawberry shortcake stuff, didn't, but it, they did have a whole bunch of Avon stuff. And I know a lot of people think you should not buy Avon. And that's good for me because usually people do not value it and the price is usually pretty low. So I bought a whole bunch of stuff for 50 cents each and I have sold probably 80% of it now. Um, and this is one of the sets, Avon Timeless Ultra Cologne set that sold for $22. And another one of those sticker books sold. This one sold for $100, which was nice. A while back, I had picked up several of these Jiminy Cricket ear hat ornaments from the Disney store. They were on clearance. I had sold one and then just never sold another one for like a year. And I was like, what's going on? Why aren't these selling? Well, then I realized I just had a quantity of one on that first, instead of having a quantity of 12. <laughs> so now that I have changed the quantity and relisted it, um, I've sold three or four more of them. So that's nice. This little jack-o'-lantern bolo tie my mom had in her Halloween stuff. And she said, I'm never going to wear this. So why don't you sell it? So it sold right away for $12 like the same day. Someone was really excited to get this weird bow tie. <laughs> also, when we were at Astoria, they have a, a little liquidation store called Beals Only. And I love little liquidation stores. And one of the things they had were um, these Tic Tacs. And I know that Noelle Farm Girl Scavenger has done really well with her Tic Tac gum. So I looked up these Tic Tac flavors that they had there. And the sales were not as great as the gum, for sure. But I still picked up a bunch because they were three for a dollar. And so this is one of the sets that sold for $20. Here's just a pack of flashcards that sold for 10 bucks. This is one of those um, from the estate sale clean out. It's a candy container and he's just a little dog, but he's missing an ear and he's like a jar. So there's no lid on the bottom. So he was kind of sad shape. If he would have been in better shape, I would have asked quite a bit more for him because I believe he's from the 20s or the 30s, but he sold for $13.50. And then this little guy raising his hand to ask a question. <laughs> 
<laughs> that's not what it looks like. He's like, hey, uh, over here, um, I was wondering, can you sell me soon? <laughs> this is Sergeant Rock. And um, he actually sold for five bucks. And then also in one of those sticker books, they had some of these Columbia House stamps. And this one, um, somebody sent me an $8 offer. And I said, sure, no problem. And then again, this is, I got just handfuls of these little gummed Christmas labels. And I made some different um, lots with them. And so this is a lot of 22 that sold for $10. And again, they just went into those billow bags. So they cost me, you know, nothing. Now this was an exciting sale. Again, another one of those things where people say, don't say a sell Avon. And I say, what the heck are you talking about? This is an Avon hairbrush from 1991. Avon hairbrushes are definitely a bolo. This sold this, I bought this for 50 cents in with a bunch of Avon stuff. And this sold in a day for 85 bucks. So yeah, Avon stuff. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> these are some Raggedy Ann and Andy cut and sews. Remember I was telling you about, I like to buy cut and sews. They don't sell for a bunch, but they always sell. And these guys sold for $10. And then some more of those gummed labels for 10 cents. Another lipstick, $27. This um, gal, I went to an estate sale and bought just a bunch of really neat vintage dolls and stuff. And I picked up this rock flowers. I believe I paid $10 for her and she sold for $65. This is completely random Bureau of Mines circular mercury materials survey from 1959. It sold for $9. You know, I like to sell ephemera, so sometimes I pick up some weird stuff. <laughs> and these two Betsy McCall are paper dolls um, from the 90s when they re-released some of the Betsy McCall dolls. I got $8 each for those. And then some more of those labels. I ended up selling these for $5. Uh, the same person bought both of these lots of toothbrushes. I paid uh, four for a dollar for these, and then this one sold for 10, and these two also sold for 10. And then this came from the sale where I bought all the um, Avon stuff. This was just stuck in there with it. This is a Estee Lauder Pure Fragrance Spray by Estee Lauder for women. This sold for not a, not a full container, sold for $125 in like an hour after I listed it. Vintage perfumes and colognes, love selling them. There is new, there are changes to the way that you're supposed to ship them. And I made a video about that. It's only a few videos ago from this, but you might wanna check that out. If you ever sell perfumes and colognes, you do have to sell it, send it parcel, and you do have to have a special marking on it. So go ahead and check that video out and I'll link it here too. And also from that paper sale, there was just this little booklet of um, Joan Walsh Ungland mini catalog of items from Hallmark. They had little pewter figures and plates and bells and stuff like that. Anyway, so I sold that mini catalog for four bucks. And then this is a basic readers, like an, a vintage school book. And I actually got this for free from a friend and that sold for $9. And oh, you're going to get a preview of a couple of things from November. But also on Halloween, I sold another set of those Tic Tacs. For $18. And that's it, you guys. That is the whole month of October. All kinds of stuff. Hope you enjoyed the video. Hope you come back next month to see what sold in November. See you next time, guys. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe, and ring that little bell icon so you know when I'm going to put up new videos. And I appreciate every video that you watch and every comment you make. I really do. Thanks for watching. See you next time. Bye.